Good day, viewers. Welcome to another edition of 30 Minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television with me, Manir Dan Ali. Our guest today is the governor-elect of Katsina State and the former director general of SMEDAN, that is the Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency, Malam Diko Umar Ratna. Welcome to the program. Thank you so very much, Malam Manir. I hope I've got the uh, nomenclature right because I saw in one interview you were saying you do not want to be addressed as excellency. Is that going to be the standard rule? Of course, yes, because I've made my point very clear. The way you said it, I think is the, way, the best way for me to honor it because Marlon Dukwarada, I think, is the best. But being called an excellency, I think it puts something into your head and then makes you think that you are an excellent person in the society. So, so people will start intimidating some people with that name alone. So I think it is better when I finish my tenure, if I have done something excellently well in Katana State, then I can be called any name, but not on the job. But even without the name, the governor is a very powerful person in the Nigerian context, in the state and even in the whole country, which is why you see governors even <coughs> intimidating presidents. I think it's just an abuse of office because the office does not mean to intimidate people. The office does not mean to make one arrogant. The office is meant for the development of the people, to change the well-being of the people, to change their status, to change their living standard. That is the whole aim of governance. You don't need to come to become a governor and start doing something arrogantly that uh, makes people to feel somehow about you because they voted for you, they came out, sun, rain, and everything they bought it for you, I think it's better for you to be as humble as possible. Because you can't give power to yourself. It is only God that gives power to anybody. It's not money. It's not influence. It's not Godfather. It's God. That so, so are we expecting a second round of Umaru Er Adwa because he was the humblest of governors in Katsina. There are stories of him strolling down the street <coughs> from government house to buy a stick of cigarette and interacting with people. Sometimes I do ac accompany him to the roundabout to buy a cigarette when he was a governor at his first time. I think I have been a student of Umar Musa Radua for a very long time. I have learned a lot of things. I have said it over and over. He brought me into the limelight of politics. We, sometimes if we travel, sometimes he asks me to sleep in his own room. So I think I have learned a lot of things. I have never seen, I have said it over, I have never seen a leader as humble as Umar Musa, the one I was close to. So I think uh, it is really something that I have grown up with, to be like him, uh, to imitate what he does, because I learned that most of the things he does are good. And I want to follow those good steps of Umar Musa Radua to actualize the mandate for the people of Katsina State. You did say it was him that brought you to limelight. You were local government chairman under his watch. How was it then? I think it is really very, uh, it was smooth. In fact, what happened was uh, I was working in a bank at that time. But despite working in the bank, I have a lot of interest in politics. So whatever happens in my world, in my local government politically, despite the heavy work of the, of the, of the private sector, I used to come for meetings and all out of it. But in fact, I even attempted to contest for House of Representatives in 1999, I think, uh, to contest for chairmanship of the local government. But I think he dropped the ambition. He said, I should wait. I shouldn't. So, so later on, as I was working in the bank, I was participating in the political process in my locality. One time I just came to Katana to greet him one weekend. He asked me, please, I, 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 I observe that you have a lot of interest in politics. Why can't you just go and resign your appointment and come and, be, uh, and let me appoint you as caretaker committee chairman of the local government? Right. I said, fine. I went back, I, I discussed with my family and everybody, a lot of my friends, but everybody says I shouldn't do that. I should right. build my career in the, in the banking, banking sector industry, because yeah. this one, can, to be a caretaker committee, maybe is just a temporary thing for six or three months. 
then you get out of it. But because of the love I have, because I feel that at that time there is nothing you can do to change the life of your people without being in government. Right. So I feel that I should accept the appointment. I accepted it and after a period of one year or so, the election was conducted, I became an executive chairman of the LOCA. And that is how it all started. And are we expecting local governments under your watch when you get sworn in at the end of May? to be allowed to function because one of the key problems in Nigeria is that the governors have just got the local governments in their pocket I don't, and they don't want them to even breathe. You know, it was all misperception because you get the local government in your pocket more when you allow them to do their functions. You know, when we were local government chairman at that time, we were giving free hand. The governor gave us our money but it's only that there is check and balances before you do that. He, had, he, has, he has established a very strong inspectorate of local governments. And that inspectorate was being headed by one of the most trustworthy people in Katana, Alaji Abu Damala at that time. So he was inspecting because at that time before you embark on any project, after you sat with their council and came up with project, you send it to the inspectorate for final approval. Right. And the deputy governor was then, uh, was then the one uh, supervising the, the, the inspectorate. And then he gave you approval for all the projects. But they give you your money and they follow up to ensure that those approvals you got are being implemented as at when due. And if you refuse to do that, Abu Damal and Karwahi will gather all the people in the local government and say, take your local government to account your chairman has been given so so amount for this project. If he doesn't do it, he has stolen your money, so you better follow up your money. So there was check and balances at that time. So is that something you will want to do of yourself as is, the governor? Of course, this is exactly what I want to do. I will establish a very strong inspectorate or ministry for local government and make it functional and then allow local government free hands to get their money, do what they want to do, but under a guide, so that we ensure that money are being spent appropriately and uh, there is value for the money given to them. You know, if you allow the system just to run like that freely without any intervention or without any inspection or monitoring, you end up uh, seeing a lot of things that you may not want to see. And the people may end up suffering because when their money is being spent uselessly, or recklessly, that means the people will stop out the more. But when the local government are functional, you, you hardly see people in the office of the governor because small, small contracts, they get it from their local government. Small jobs, they get it, the small projects are being done in the local government. And in some instances, you see a joint project between the state government and the local government, which will be beneficial to the people. And if it is being guided well, because we have gone to 361 words in the state, we have interacted with the people. The people have told those what they need. Most of those things they needed, it's not something the state government must do. Some of them will ask you for a borehole. Some of them will ask you for on tar road. Some of, you, some of them will ask you for a dispensary or a block of primary school. You know, these are things. When I was local government chairman, I even built a secondary school with the local government money. We, we but now local governments cannot even build a culvert. They cannot even build a culvert. Oh, I think it is something that we need to put that in place. But I know it is not going to be immediately when I'm sworn in into office because now the local government account in Katana State is being run jointly. All the money is put in one basket and is being run jointly. What we need to establish is to separate everything because there is no point... I have said it over and over, there is no point when I am from Charanchi local government. If Charanchi local government pays, can pay a salary of 30 million and have a reserve of 20 million, I see no reason why, why the people of Charanchi cannot utilize that 20 million for the benefit of the, for their development. Uh, but you see some local governments who have overloaded their local government with a lot of staff. They couldn't even get anything after they paid salary. In some instances, while I was chief of staff, uh, 2016, in some instances, the local government, the state government has to beep 
about 200 to 300 million to enable the local government to pay their salaries. So, but it is just, I think it is just unfair if my money from those of my local government will be taken to Dusi to settle the debt of Dusi or to settle some of the problem of people of Dusi. And they created the problem they created in the first the place. they created the problem themselves, themselves. I think right. what we need to do is separate everything, yeah. give local governments their money, and let them pay their salary. If they reserve anything, it's up to them. But if you touch on something that is the unrealistic number of people that are taking salaries from local government. We hear that chairman, I don't know whether it happened even in your own case, there are children and even those who are suckling, who are in primary school, are all loaded onto the local I, government I salary this, bill. This is, this is true, because, but I think something has been done when we came into our 2000, we screened and we were able to push out some, but I'm not saying that up to now you cannot find such kind of things in the state. But what we want to do, we'll do a very, very, very serious, uh, uh, very, very serious staff audit when we come. And so that we ensure that uh, those people that are in the payroll are really given the services for the local. It is unfortunate. You see somebody receiving a uh, salary in the local government, it's, but he has already gotten work at the federal level or some private sector. He was doing double... Uh, taking double taking salaries double salary. for work not done. For work not done. So we need to fish out those things. And also we need to fish out those staffs in the local government who are redundant, doing nothing. Why can't we see how we can train them and utilize them in our primary or secondary school where we don't have enough teachers? But, but then, these measures wouldn't endear you to the local political establishment that seems to feed on all this, whether it's the concentration of powers at the level of the governor, whether it is all this uh, hanky-panky in terms of salaries going to people who are not working for the local government. So how will you... Honest, survive that. Honestly, I don't have anything to fear because God has done everything to me. I don't have a godfather. I was able to become the governor of governor elect of Kazuna State. Is is it me? It's not me. Is it my resources? It's not my resources. Is it my power? It's not my power. It's God that gives me power. So I think it is a betrayal on God to even not do the right thing for the people of Kazuna State. Some people may feel bad. But they don't give power. It's only God that gives power. If I will be able to spend four good years and doing four good and being and doing very good things for the people of Katana State, I don't have any issue. If the people of Katana State feel that they need to change me, fine. I don't have issue with that, but I will not feel myself if I didn't do the right thing because I've been given mandate to deliver on about 9 million people of Kazan State. We are not talking about APC, PDP, or any political parties, about the people of Kazan State. My promise is to do the right thing. If I do the right thing, whatever the consequences may be, to win or not to win second term is not my problem. On a very interesting note, I would like us to go for a short break and resume the discussion shortly thereafter. Welcome back. It is still 30 minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television, and our guest today is the governor-elect of Katsina State, Malam Diko Umar Radda. Just before we went on break, you are claiming not to have any godfather, and many people will think or imagine that the outgoing governor is your godfather, so to say. You are his chief of staff, and probably it was his nod and wink that made you emerge as the candidate of the ruling party and eventually to get elected. No, Are you I, disowning him? No, I'm not. He has been a very good political mentor and we have been political friends for a very long time, over almost 20 years. I've stayed with him despite all odds. I have been with him despite all the challenges. I have remained with him. I lost my position because of him. Which of the positions well, does Well, I was the chairman of the local government. Right. I lost it. I couldn't get re-election. I couldn't get opportunity to get re-elected as chairman of the local government because I followed him. That was his that was, then uh, to, earlier attempt to uh, be a governor of Katsina State. Yes, governor. that was 20, 2007. Right. So I think uh, the issue is, is not about 
when everybody that has the clear view of what has happened at the primary election, among the political group of the governor, there were four of us who contested for governorship. All of us were political friends of the governor. There was his SGS, there was his commissioner, there was the MD of the Federal Mortgage Bank that time. He was also one of the stronghold in the family of political politics of the Masari political family. Sadiq Aradua was his chair of staff. Well, he was the speaker and he became a senator under CPC. And the gov deputy governor is his friend. He has been the deputy governor for all these years. Yet you emerged as And I was also among them. So the governor made it clear to all of them. He called for a meeting. He told us that he don't have a candidate. Anybody that emerged among his group, you will be happy with that. And so it be. That was how it goes. And we went uh, and I was able to, to get the ticket. So on that note, nobody will say that it was the governor who said they should vote for me. In fact, even for the insinuation that is going on within the town, I wasn't the person they were insinuating that the governor was, wanted to was, get was, was supporting chosen. at right. that time. So, but the governor has made his point very clear. He don't have a candidate among us, but he will love somebody from his political family to emerge. And that was what happened. So that was why I'm not saying that... You're not beholden to any to, to, particular person. To any person. particular person, yes. So how then will your government be? Are you going to build on what Governor Masari has done, or are you going to have a clear departure, as you are hinting? You know, uh, generally, uh, government is a continuation. That you can't totally say that what this government is doing entirely is wrong. Especially a government that you were a part of. But the issue is, I think even the democracy, that was the main reason why, one of the main reasons that you change government after two terms. You know, when you get elected, they change you after eight years, no matter how good you are. The reason was they want to bring fresh ideas, fresh people, so that they may think outside the box on some other things that the other government may not have touched. Because the government may not touch every aspect of it. So but how are you going to think outside the box in terms of insecurity? Because it's the one key issue that is affecting lots of Kazina citizens. I, 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 have, I have outlined my strategic policy. And one of the main points I said I would do is, I will establish a state security outfit. That, security, that is your own Amotekun. Yes, I would, I, would, I would create my own Amotekun, whatever name we are going to give it in Kazana State. You know, it was so amazing. Sometimes when there is an announcement for recruitment for military or police in Kazana State, you see thousands of youths. They are all coming from those localities and villages. They want to be in the army, they want to be in the police. These are people who have it in their mind that they want to serve their nation. But unfortunately, maybe they are recruiting only 100. So those thousands will go back, not because they are not qualified, not because they are not fit and able, but because they couldn't get a space. They are looking for only 100. So I would look among those categories of people who are living in those localities, especially the frontline local governments. Because we are thinking of using the locals. If you are within the community, it makes you to be more stronger, more courageous to face the challenges than people who are coming from outside because they are raping their mothers, they are killing their fathers, they will have it in their heart and they also to deal know with the situation. And they also know the criminally they minded are, people within the, the community. Criminal, yes, of course. So that is why first we want to use the local intelligence by the use of traditional rulers, opinion leaders within the communities. We'll use the locals to combine them with the military and the police to attack the situation. We'll also use technology in tackling the insecurity within the community. In fact, as I speak to you today, we have developed an app that will help us to, to streamline and to help uh, uh, deal with the situation by helping those people that we are recruiting 
to deal with the situation. And I think also we use kinetic and non-kinetic approach. The non-kinetic approach is we we'll look at those things that makes those people to be criminals in this aspect. You know, some of them, they lack schools. They lack the basic amenities in their localities, hospitals and schools. And you know largely why these people are doing these things is because of the operations. They have suffered over years. Those planning people, they have suffered operation from the police, from the traditional institution, from the courts. And you know, when you suppress that, and also try to provide education to them, both Islamic and then uh, Western. Western education, because it is what build morals into someone. When someone is, is illiterate, you know, he doesn't think very well. Because they don't think more than like a human being. They think just like the animals because we are living in a wild world. But the problem is not restricted to Kasuna. Even if this deployment does the employment of uh, vigilantes or security people at the state level, what do you do with Zamfara? What do you do with Kaduna? What do you do with all the other neighboring states that may not necessarily be doing exactly what you want to do? I think, I think we are a bit lucky in this aspect because most of, I think all the governors in the Northwest are new. All of us, Jigawa, Kano, Kasena, Sokoto, Zamfara, Kebi, Kaduna, we are all new. Even Niger is a new governor. So I think these new governors may come with a fresh idea. And I think I have begun to think about how we can even start discussing, even before our inauguration, on how we can build a regional, uh, regional integration between the states so that we can be able to integrate and be able to look at our problem holistically so that if I'm doing something in Kaduna, someone is doing it in Zambara and another was doing it in Kaduna, we'll be able together and even to push for more support from the center. If we pull ourselves together as governors from the Northwest to face the president or to face any other security output, and I think our bargain will be more stronger than any than when you go individually especially now that the northwest is the highest zone in the nation that gives both to the president but but how will it be different because the outgoing president muhammadu buhari is from katsina with governor masari in katsina and all these things happening in katsina and other northwestern states and they haven't been tackled how will it be different when the president is even from the other end of the country. No, no, I think it is not about the president, where the president comes from. It's because about it's the, the federal No, it's about, prerogative. it's about the relationship between the governors within the region. I was part of it because I was part of the people that came with the governor when they started that uh, meeting in the Northwest. I was chief of staff to the governor, so wherever he goes, we go together. The problem is there was lack of cooperation between the governors of the region at that time. So we are praying and hopeful that because we are all new, we are fresh with this, we have a lot of fresh ideas. Maybe if we started cooperating right from the onset, we may be able to tackle that problem. But once there is no good cooperation synergy among the state governors in the region, there is no way, there is no magic you will use. Even if the president is from your own house to tackle the insecurity because everybody wants to do it. You know, governance is about the people. It's not about the people of Katana to say that, no, during my administration, I was able to stop insecurity. No, it's about collective responsibility for all of us. But there's this big problem of the war economy. That is, people are benefiting from the current state of affairs, from the informers to the security people who are also growing fat on, I mean, the continued uh, insecurity to even the traditional rulers, some of whom in some states have to be removed. So is it not much more complicated than you are making it out to uh, be? No, because, you know, when you look at the, the traditional institution, it's because there is no rules, uh, there is no law and order. Because when someone, no matter how high you are, you, 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 you are able to find, you are found guilty on anything, why can't we deal with you? What is the problem with that? 
So everybody should sit up. And when you look at the uh, the other thing you mentioned, when you look at the the war economy, the, I mean the, the insecurity, economy, the, the way in, the way in which the people who are supposed to stop it are already part of, of it. Of course, they are when, when you look at the, uh, the aspect of the community economy, you know what we need to do is that is why I said that when I come in, I will establish small and medium enterprises agency directly working under my office because of so your that experience we, yeah, so that we can create more jobs opportunity for our teaming use when they are busy they will not have time to give information to anybody when they have w the means of living they don't have time to do all those sort of, sort of things because the redundancy is one part of it and when you look at the other aspect you mentioned the some security uh, people, are, people involved. are involved yes because there is money involved in it when you look when you use the locals combined with the conventional security or to reduce that aspect to the minimum because what i intend to do is whatever i'm giving it goes directly to the people that are going to benefit from it you touched on employment the biggest area that sucks as people employment is agriculture and katsuna is an agrarian state what will you do differently apart from maybe subsidizing fertilizer uh doing all the usual things which haven't taken us I, I think what I need to do, and I have made it very clear, I will go back to the extension stuff. In the agri with agricultural aspect, yes. You know, in Katana, we have about three extension schools at that time. We had one in Dauda, one in Kahensol, one in Gambu, Dauda, Dauda, Dauda Emirate. If you are able to bring them back and establish the extension services, you know, extension services is a link between research institution to the farmer and back to the government, from government to the research institution to the farmer. Because when you have extension staff, they will be able to fish out what are the problems. What are the problems of the seed? How can we take this problem to the research institution? What are the improvements the research institution can do to the seed? How do you do best farm practices? Especially now that we have issues with land tenure. The lands are becoming smaller every time, but what you need to do is best practices. When you have best practices, you'll be able to produce more in a small piece of land. Because largely our farmers are subsistence farmers. Subsistence farmers, they, have, they operate at yeah, a very at a small very scale. Level, yeah. But our governors, and most of the government, they prioritize supply of fertilizer as the only means of tackling this problem of agriculture in our society. But you have twofold. One for the subsistence farmers, which are about 85 or 90 percent of the total population of farmers in the state. And then you have 10 percent who are the mechanized farmers, or we can say large scale farmers. They will also have their own blueprint on how to help them to secure, to produce more. And again, you, we have a lot of poorest in Katana State. We have a lot of graduates in Katana State. You can create that farm, uh, farm business uh, uh, scheme. scheme that you'll be able to cultivate a piece of land, give it to a person, provide all what it takes from the money he may need to do the activities, supply fertilizer, supply insecticides, supply improved seeds, so that they can be on their own. And when they became very strong in that, you graduate them and recruit other people. From there, people will diverse into a lot of other sectors. And the issue we want to also encourage is complete value chain of production. Because you see, our people will just produce and sell. And when they produce and sell, mostly they produce and sell at lost. Because if you have added value to what you produce, it could have gone a long way in helping you to earn more, to get more, to get more, That's a very an, an, an economy. And second, thirdly, we need to also have a whole year round uh, farming because redundancy is as a result of just spending three months in the farm and you have about eight months to spend doing nothing. We have to call it a day for this edition of 30 Minutes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Allah Jumanur. Thank you. Viewers, that's it is the end of this edition of 30 Minutes. Keep edit with us.